welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today in this mind control episode is Silver Quill. You cannot control me, for I have no mind to possess. Haha. Maybe I should become the puppeteer and control you that way. Haha. If you want to stand above me for hours on end trying to move my arms and legs, that's good on you. Good luck with that. Maybe you can become a real boy. I'd rather become a real bizmatch. <laughs> oh, you. And also joining us today is my minion of the mine, Sapphire Heart Songs. Minion nothing. Go screw yourself, Norman. See, that's what I implanted in your head to say. <laughs> Not really. Also that too. I don't know. I'm having an image of Safi, pure yellow, <laughs> mostly bald, with really big glasses, goggles, really. And For just... a second, I thought you were going to picture me as Homer Simpson. What the heck? <laughs> well, you know, old minion. Oh, God. No. no. I can hear you. <laughs> no. I could hear you spouting gibberish. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> and also joining us today... Oh, I gonna have, hmm, maybe I can do a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Yes. I activate my spell card, the change of heart, to control will. Hey there. Mm, Norman, have I ever told you just how ruggedly handsome you look? Yes, you did. It's in the script. Well, now I have. I've never seen you in this light before, but you're just so beautiful. Also in the script. How are you doing, man? I'm doing just fine. How about you? Oh. <laughs> I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing fine. Will, Will, oh, that Will, is so good, baby. You could be anything I want you to be. <laughs> wow, we're exercising some free will here. <laughs> but unfortunately, Norman, it's just love that can't be. For you see, there's another. And it's to this, oh, and it's this great episode of MLP that we're going to review. Uh, it's the one that's captured my heart. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, well, that was an awkward start, but hey, this is the MBS show where awkward starts are something. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review season six, episode number twenty-one. Every little thing she does, and in this episode, and in this episode, Starlight Grimmer tries to impress Princess Twilight by taking on multiple friendship problems all at once. And what did we learn about this? It's not a good idea. So, before we officially start, we go for first impressions. And let's go, like, how I introduce you guys. Silver, you first. Ah, uh, let's see. Mind control. The equestrian pastime. Mm -hmm. you th you'd think with this episode I'd actually be more offended and be raging against Starlight Glimmer for her shenanigans. Truth is, I actually enjoyed this. This was kind of Starlight's winter wrap-up, but with a reverse outcome. Oh. Well, and it also set the stage for the finale, which, okay, we, we finalized the finale, so I don't know if it's spoilers to talk about this. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, not te really. te Technically, it's... Well, it's been over a month or so now since the finale's out, and I'm sure that everybody's watched it, and if they haven't and listening to us talk about it beforehand, uh, why weren't you watching it? But anywho, if you do want to talk about it, as per usual, spoiler warnings. Well, we'll get into this a little bit more later, but it set the stage for uh, To There and Back Again, showing probably one of Starlight's biggest vulnerabilities. That said, I will have to rail later against Equestria and their their spell selection and how easily accessible it is. But this had some great humor, uh, some truly terrifying moments. Fluttershy. <laughs> and of all things, I this episode made me want an Apple Family spinoff. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, there, my. there you go. All right, then. And Safi, what about you? Well, all I can say is with, like, Starlight Glimmer, old habits die hard. I mean, the whole aspect of mind control, as soon as I heard she was about to do this, I'm thinking and sitting there going, Starlight, what are you doing? Have you not learned your lesson, girl? Apparently not. Starlight's, and I have to disagree, 
I say it's her lesson zero in a way. Like, she tries to do friendship problems all at once and ends up failing. The difference is that, how do I explain, like, um, the outcome was different. Instead of mind controlling the friend, or in, uh, mind controlling the whole entire town, Starlight basically ruins the castle by trying to do, by trying to take shortcuts. Well, in all honesty, the biggest difference between Lesson Zero and this one is that Twilight didn't have any problems. So to solve this solution, she created a problem. Hence, creating a problem that doesn't need to exist and having a problem that she... So the difference was that Starlight was just being lazy and wanted to get everything over with. Yes. Alright, sorry, I didn't... Bleh. I did not get enough sleep, therefore my thoughts aren't fully collected and I have trouble explaining myself anyway, so... Yeah. It's okay. I did enjoy this episode, though. Alright, that's good. And... I'll, I'll stop there before I ramble on any further. And Wills, what about you, man? Well, my thoughts are actually very similar to uh, Sapphire's in how I think it's actually more like uh, Starlight Glimmer's Lesson Zero, um, especially with the ending of how um, an alicorn has to come and fix everything, only instead of Celestia, it's Twilight now, <laughs> and she's like, dang it, i got to clean up your messes. But um, for me, I loved this episode's comedy. Uh, just seeing what happens when... Because all these characters got distilled by the mind control down to their very essence and got some very uh, direct orders uh, mind control going on. The kind where you be careful what you wish for or what you say because they will be literal with it. And oh boy, is that my favorite type of comedy. Just, uh, you know, someone dealing with someone who's a bit too literal. It's just delicious. So, so in other words, with great power comes great responsibility. Applejack, quit, quit talking about, you know, everything that you have to do, but your dead parents, you're not going to be Spider Bear. All right. Give it up. <laughs> but, but I already done made a deal with the devil. <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, oh, also that is. Batmare, banana, Batmare. Oh, wait a second. She made a deal with the devil, and it made her forget about her child that she couldn't. Oh no, made. no, no, I knew no, it. no, 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 no! Put that hit can out of wait. No, anyway, so me. <laughs> yes, it turns out that Diamond Tiara is really Applejack's daughter. No, dum, oh, dum, dum. no. Uh, but anywho, as for me, this episode was fun. Like how you guys mentioned that, um, the two out of you say that this is kind of a. Uh, Lesson Zero kind of thing. And yeah, I can see it. And with you, Silver, you mentioned that this is kind of the winter wrap-up, but the opposite for Starlight here. I can see that. And I do enjoy this episode. It's one of those scenarios where, okay, I want to prove myself. I want to prove myself to the princess of friendship that I can do this. And right off the gate, we can see that Starlight here is very powerful. She is good at magic. But one of the things that she lacks here is that she is terrible at human interaction or pony interaction. She does not know how to interact with ponies. And let's just say that she's very socially awkward. And socially awkward people tend to lose grasp on reality sometimes because they are afraid of almost everything. And the whole way that she deals with it is, well... She knows one thing, and one thing is magic. And sorry, um, what we learn in Lesson Zero and Winter Wrap Up is magic is not always the proper answer for everything. You have to work hard at things. Hence, um, Winter Wrap Up. It's basically the, when all you have is a hammer, everything is a nail analogy. <laughs> or in this case, it's when you have magic, everything else is your plaything. <laughs> oh, God, no. But anyhow, uh, let's get right into the spoiler territory. So if you have not watched this episode yet, please do. We are going to, well, talk about key points in the episode that might spoil you or might spoil the surprise. So anyhow, if you haven't watched this, please do. We'll wait for you. 
and welcome back. So, we start off this episode with Twilight going down a list of lessons that Starlight should do. Or just proving that they're God-modded. Oh, yeah, god mod. Yeah, Unicorn's OP. Even by Unicorn standards, this is just... Egads. Yeah. Although, here's the thing. Every, everyone dumps on Starlight for, ooh, she's as strong as Twilight, as who's an alicorn now. Mm-hmm. And I've always taken some issue with that because, one, Twilight was an exceptional unicorn before anything. I don't think being an alicorn has really upped her power level. And the idea that Twilight is the only mag- magical prodigy in the world seems... <laughs> I know it sounds weird to say, but it seems so unrealistic in this land of magical talking horses. Yeah, look at Dragon Ball Super. Previously, we had only one Super Saiyan Blue. Now we have two. My my thing of the whole thing uh, was actually just more so Twilight was holding herself back when she and Starlight were fighting each other. She just didn't want to, you know, drastically hurt her. And as it got more and more desperate, I mean, Twilight has always solved... Twilight has always solved her problems with friendship, never with magic. She's always used magic as a last resort or as a way to actually help with solving the friendship problems. But never has she been a warrior. The only time she's ever had to be, that is when she had to fight Tyrek. So when it came to, you know, um, Starlight Glimmer, um, she still was able to solve everything by, well, talking. Yeah, up until then, she was just, you know, trying to hold back, actually, you know, Turning her into paste. <laughs> and at the same time, too, whenever she uses magic to solve her problem, it never ends well. Hence, win the wrap-up. Hence, lesson zero. Although we should also acknowledge that part of the reason Twilight wins is she starts making speeches about, the magic I use is the magic of friendship. And the villain just sort of rolls her eyes and is like, you know what? See, me went to I don't want to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Look, I cannot handle the corn. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, too, Starlight here is one powerful unicorn. One of her special abilities, or one of her abilities is magic. She really knows how to use it, and she really picks up on things with magic. So to say that she's powerful, um, well, I do say that she's a quick learner. She picks up on minute details on how to perform magic. Well, later on, we'll see one where she performs two magic at the same time, blah, blah, blah. But as for today's lesson with Twilight and Starlight, is teleportation, using the instant transmission spell to teleport to spots around Equestria. You're on a Dragon Ball kick, man. I what, know! What? what it, are you just looking for an episode where God comes back and kills everybody? <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> I know, but you know, there's always going to be that one hero that kind of saves the day with the power of friendship, you know? And then it bitterly fails. We'll talk about that another time. (laughs) Oh, God. Uh... Here's here's my question. Does Super Speed Starlight use the Dewey Decimal System when she reorganizes the library? Oh, I do hope so. I mean, actually, when I think about it, the surest way to drive Twilight to a blood rage just sort those books wrong. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I think she'll have a field day because, Spike, the books are out of order. You know what that means? Oh, no. Please, Twilight, no. Reshelving day. Oh. She says Reshelving it with a slasher smile. Oh, God, no. Where you, where you spend three days without human contact at, or pony contact, and then find out about all the stuff you missed. Yep. And meanwhile, Moondancer's off to the side saying, oh, you want to judge my life, do you? <laughs> uh... <laughs> actually, I was. Uh, you should rearrange everything by color. Oh, uh, God. Oh, actually, now that you mentioned that, look at the screenshot of the book's line on the ground. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. there. <laughs> there are greens and reds and purples and maybe a yellow or two. Then you get them back on the shelves and suddenly... It's all, all this monochromatic, frigid blue that, again, I cannot like in this castle. And blue is my favorite color. Well, you do know the reason why, right? Because this castle is not well designed. No, it's because... No, no, no. It's it's, it's much easier, Silver. It's from the 90s. <laughs> this cla- this castle is blue. Da, ba, dee, no, da, no, da, no, da, no, 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 no. Okay, but anywho, listen, um, besides teleportation is transmogrification and, well, um, shield spells. Since Twilight knows her shield spell, let's see what uh, Starlight can do. And, well, she always has to one-up things. Yeah. 
great job, Starlight. Great job. Now, reshelving day. Great. Which she also did, what she was able to with her spells combine, like, two different ones to become super speed in two places at once. Which, actually, when you think about it, why didn't she do it, you know, with as the problem presents itself later in the episode, but whatever. Starlight, do you know what you've done? You've created a time paradox. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, she's she's kind of doing what the Flash could do. Uh, only the Flash was able to do it so well that he was able to be in like twenty different places at once. Oh, you mean that like one false god? It, this is the DC universe. It's full of nothing but false gods. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean seriously, they have like. In fact, they did a, they did a whole thing in the nineties about the new gods, oh. and that failed horrendously. <laughs> anywho, <laughs> don't get like don't don't get Linkara started on it. Yeah. But anywho, after the library has been reshelved by the power of Starlight Super Speed and being at two places at once, um, Twilight just reminds Starlight that, hey, I noticed something here that, um, there's something off with your learning schedule thingy. Um, I don't see you doing the friendship lesson. Um, when are you gonna do it? Uh, never. Well, hey, that ma- that makes Starlight an excellent example of a college student <laughs> procrastination. Yay. I I am currently procrastinating a paper I should be doing for a uh, class right now, so I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yay! No bad Safi, bad Safi. No cookie or any desserts for you until you finish that paper. Okay, oh. I need to lose weight anyway. Now, let's pause to admire Starlight's room as she and Spike have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Four. There are th- there are three things of note. First is the portrait of Trixie over her desk. <laughs> All you need is a little kiss mark there, and the shippers would go crazy. Are they not already? Well, yeah. it's crazier. <laughs> and you have to know. You have to know that was Trixie's gift to her friend. It's like it's a portrait of me, so you'll always have something of me by your side. <laughs> Though there's there's also actually four things. There's also the equal sign with a cross out over it. Oh, where's that one? I can't. It's right next to the Trixie portrait. Oh yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, Starlight's yeah, yeah, yeah. hair is blocking the way for. There's also a mystery mare with a witch's hat near her bed. I don't know if that might be her mama. Is that something earlier in the screenshots? Oh, uh, no, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a screenshot where Spike is scratching his head and you can see Starlight's bed. And what, from what I said, I know I'm not dead. <laughs> uh, trying to check it out, but might, oh. might be off my meds, but, and last but certainly not least is the giant butterfly, uh, portrait. Mm. Uh, and I just think, well, she did time travel with no regard for the butterfly effect. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, also she has glasses. Oh, and a globe of the world, which I think that's the, I think that's a globe of the world on the far right. Yeah. Which is actually not a lot of water in that hemisphere. I'm a little worried about pony hydration. It could be the other way around where the lighter green is the ocean and the darker green is the um, land. I'm seeing green and blue. Really? Wait, are you, are you seeing white and gold or black and blue? Oh god, no, not oh this god, again. Oh god, not this. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm just personally glad that there is a globe because that finally puts the flat or the flat equestria theory to rest. Who had that one in the first place? Um, conspiracy theorists. Okay, never mind. Anywho, um, Spike comes in the room and talks to Starlight. Well, having a heart to heart talk about things and well, giving her comfort. Spike has been awesome in this season, haven't he? Pretty soon yep. he's going to be Starlight's number one assistant. Uh, Starlight has gathered all of Twilight's friends, and therefore her friends, into the hall uh, to try and take all their friendship problems at once. Just use the castle as a staging ground. So that includes baking with Pinkie Pie, helping uh, create fabrics and designs with Rarity, helping Applejack scrapbook, tending the wounded animals with Fluttershy, and chillaxing Mitt the Rainbow Dash. Mm -hmm. Which, wow. of course, the problem is no one knows what the heck chillaxing is. Chillax, man. And Starlight might actually have a little bit more with, in common with the Cutie Mark Crusaders than anyone. Oh. For as Pinky tries to break into song, Starlight shuts her trap. Just as uh, in Some Point to Watch Over Me, Apple Bloom wanted to start a song, but Scootaloo done shut her down. Well, they tried to. There was a riff going on in the first few bars, but nope. Actually, you know what? 
This is what I demand in Season 7. Starlight, you can levitate and fly just as well as a Pegasus. Take Scootaloo out for a flying day. I thought that was Rainbow Dash's yeah. job. Yeah, but with levitation? <laughs> Come on. Just say, uh, you got all these magical spells that a Pegasi who struggling to fly. You do the math. <laughs> Uh, yes. I actually want to see that too now that I think about it. Oh, well. Ah, ah, see. It would be adorable. Uh, but with that, with everybody huddling around Starlight, wanting their attention, or trying to get to the proper spot because, well, the main five knows best because, well, they have experience, they have stuff to do, and Starlight is kind of in a panic because she doesn't know what to do. She's losing control. And she panics and goes to the library for a bit where she picks up the spell book. And you mentioned earlier that you're worried about this, right, Silver? You know my stance on the reform spell. I... We've had more stuff like that in more recent seasons. Uh, let's see here. At the Crystalline, Sunburst said he had several spells that could force friends to reconcile. Now think about that. Mm-hmm. You can just make friends reconcile. Now, in Twilight's library, you have several mind control spells, including one where Starlight uses the justification, oh, they won't even know they're being influenced, which, of all things, that's a defense people have used uh, to support Cadence's love spell. I've never agreed with that. It's, uh, so you're saying it's not bad as long as you don't get caught. We should just be thankful that uh, the My Little Pony universe does not exist in the Harry Dresden universe, because if the White Council ever, for one second, found out half the crap that these ponies have pulled, I'm pretty sure they would just dehorn every unicorn in existence. Probably. But, yeah. I, again, I just have to point to Equestria has no concept of the individual or or privacy of the mind. And also, a lot of people try to say, eh, well, these are... These are just, you know, high-level spells that aren't readily available. Well, Sunburst was not a high-level unicorn, but he had access to several spells. These are open without a locking key under Twilight's library, which one can just walk into and search out. That's like saying, oh, we could leave these nuclear bombs here and there as long as they don't know know the launch code. Silver, I think they used the mantra from Doctor Strange where knowledge is available for everyone. It's just how you use it. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the previous caretaker, uh, really supported that policy. But then it, it went south and he lost his head over it. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, Silver, uh, remember way back when, when you mentioned about, um, Cadence doing the whole love zappy thingy to, um, Wildfire and Lucky Clover? Yeah. Um, you mentioned something about not liking my friends and whatnot, and that got me thinking and going back to said episode and looking at the transcripts for that part because, well, um, what you mentioned to me on the part one of said review or discussion thing got me thinking and got me back to looking. And um, the transcript here goes, I'm going for a hoof a cure and that's that. Lucky says, you are not going. For, I am, I am. I've already paid for three this month. Wildfire says, I, ellipses, no, my girlfriends are all getting their Who's done? And you said that, um, please, we've done this at least, and wildfire suddenly stopped arguing. So, they're not arguing about him not liking his friends, but they're more talking about, oh, you're wasting money, please stop. Like, you don't really need to done your hoof cures for every week, please. Or he's just saying, I won't pay for it, which means he's trying to be controlling of the finances. Money is one of the topics that can break up a lot of relationships. But note, Cadence's love zap does not undo this tension. It does not help them work through the issue. It just forces them to forget, even for that period. But it's just going to crop up again. That is something you need relationship and financial counseling to overcome. Cadence is just like Starlight, looking for the quick fix. But at the same time, too, we don't really 100%... Okay, you know what? This is a Cadence thing. Um, I'm going to full stop it here on Cadence because there's a part two waiting for us, so I'm going to save it there. So back to Starlight. Wait, there's a part two of Cadence brainwashing people? <laughs> or why have I not heard about this? No, it's what we have to do for the show. Remember um, talking about the Crystal Empire part one? There's a part two coming. I don't know when. <laughs> 
but anywho, back onto Starlight. Um, she goes to the library, opens up a book, and combines two spell, and creating one mega, <coughs> mega manipulation spell. And said spell works really well. A bit too it well. It also, co- it also colors the books behind her. I'm just not gonna let this go. <laughs> uh, boys. <laughs> Of course, you know, anyone who's very familiar with these kind of spells immediately can recognize the music in the background. And here come the brooms with the buckets. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd call that reference a clean sweep. <laughs> sorry, sweet, sorry. Sweet, I should go. Ha, huh, you're worried about Trump America? <laughs> I already rule you all. <laughs> God, no. Uh, uh-huh. Pluto, no. we're going to take these suckers for all the money that they're worth. Let's get Star Wars next. Come on, Han Solo. Time to get your own film. <laughs> my my Fantasia childhood has been ruined. Thanks. You're welcome. You're, you're about to find out my ultimate solution. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, Starlight goes back to the foyer and finds... Her friends all quiet and, well, they're not moving, they're not responding and Starlight is a bit worried until she realized that, oh, that's one of her spell needs an activation, um, what should we call this? An activation code or activation, oh, trigger, that's it, yes, the word is trigger. Needs a trigger to activate her friends. Oh gosh, she just triggered oh. the main five. Oh gosh. She just triggered the main five. Okay, <laughs> should, should we go with the, should we go with the social justice warrior label? Uh, Holocaust denial, <laughs> idiocy. No, 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 we're not going for any of uh, those. Oh, no, 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 Silver, <laughs> we should do Gamergate. That's still very popular right now, apparently, for some reason. Oh, Gamergate, how about, uh, Cyclops was right? <laughs> God, yes! No, yes. no Cy- Cyclops is a jerk, Cyclops is a jerk, no. Uh, but anywho, um, so, one of the things that Starlight attends first is baking with Pinkie Pie. One of the things that she does is, well, read off the recipe book and Pinkie Pie does it with breakneck speed. And, well, thinking that everything's okie dokie loki, um, Starlight tells Pinkie to do everything in the book. Yes, everything in the book. Again, this is why phrasing is very important when making wishes. If you do this in D&D and you just make a very general wish, guarantee you the gin is just going to ruin your day and laugh at you the whole way through. What is it? Oh, gin always ruins my day and laughs at me the day after <laughs> with that splitting headache. <laughs> no, no, not G-I-N, D-G-I-N, D-J-I-N-N. Look, I'll, I, ha- I have the G-I-N when I have a T-G-I-F. <laughs> So, so excuse me, I'll BRB, or I'll just GTFO. Oh, I'm just LOLing you guys. Uh, yeah, but when it comes to Pinky's insanity there, though, I mean, you have decided to take the most reality-bending figure in this cart in this whole series, besides Discord, and unhinge her mentally. Y- you have opened the floodgates to, like, basically a weapon of mass partying. Oh god, no. Uh, but anywho, Applejack and Rarity are in the same room, which is in the library, and, well, Rarity asks Starlight Grimmer, what do you want to do? And said doing it, follow this design in the book. Or, what was the phrase? I forgot. Um, Do this, was it? Make th- this dress that's on this ah, page. Right. I believe it was. Yes. Which... Is actually a pretty ugly dress. I'm surprised Rarity's inner fashionista is not crying out in despair. Oh, probably inside her mind it is. Yeah. Screaming, wailing. Like, no! Not that kind of scheme! Oh, ah! uh, yeah. And, well, with that, she's off to her duty and Starlight heads off to Applejack, which, <coughs> which she, um, asks Applejack about the scrapbooks and said history of the picture. And starting with one picture, um, it's Granny Smith knew she was going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, there's a lot of history for Applejack here. And said history is really, really fun. Kind of makes you wonder just like what the actual stories to half of them are. It's like you could fill a book with half these scrapbooks. In fact, you know what? I wouldn't mind just sitting on with a scrapbooking exercise with AJ just to hear some of her family history. It might be interesting. Or it might be terrifying. 
I'd like to know that what the creature that was stalking Big Mac in one <laughs> photo. Oh, that was that was Cheerilee, oh. and she was very. Pissed. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Cheer Lee was clearly having some issues back then. Yeah, you could say she was having, she, she was hounding Dude, him all oh night. God. <laughs> uh, but, anyway. Oh my! Cheer Lee wanted Big Mac because he's a dirty oh, boy. God, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, no, no Shawn Michaels reference, please. But anywho, we head off to Fluttershy, and the thing that she needs to do is well, bring everyone to the foyer. Or bring all her, all of her animal friends to the foyer and kind of help them. And and with Rainbow Dash, Starlight asks, just find the perfect place to chillax, whatever that is. Going back to Fluttershy, I love how it's just like the second you take out her mind, all the animals realize what's a pro- what's going on. They realize there's a problem and they flee for it. Their innate in animal sense in sense is just new. We gotta get the heck out of here. Although, sh- although shouldn't they attack she who is bit brainwashed their their beloved caretaker. Well, actually, they've got less after I'm through with them because they're oh, delicious, God. but that's a different story. But anywho... Um, oh, that's that's more than Norman could don't. bear. <laughs> uh, but anywho, back to Applejack and her scrapbooks. She showed a picture of Forrest Gump, I think. Probably. And, well, like you mentioned before, is Big Mac covered in mud while hiding from a really, really angry predator. Get it? Predator? <laughs> He's a... I don't, I don't know. He, he might, uh, he might just be having a bad day. Uh, you don't know he's angry. God, don't be so species this Norman. Shaw. Uh, you know, uh, way of, some people might get what I was trying to say. But anywho, after a long, boring conversation, Rarity's finished her work and said work is drawing off dress and okay now yeah make an exact copy oh, of the true. dress and starlight as make a dress version of that and she's finished kind of for the mouse to wear no make, make it bigger and after that starlight goes back to applejack who have more history lessons and i think there they be something to do with if you can't say anything nice about any pony come sit with me <laughs> Come sit by me. Or she was just a pony standing in front of another pony asking to love her. <laughs> oh, God. What? I don't know. I'm just reaching. I think we're getting into the forest yeah. gum. I think those were all forest uh, Nothing gum. here. But anywho, um, we head back to Pinkie Pie and oh, my God. She's literally doing everything. All those food. So many cakes. So many pastries. So many... uh. Well, I don't know, kind of watching that scene, maybe a bit fatter. Yeah. I'm on a uh, diet. I think, you ju- Pinkie Pie. I think you're just flaking out. Well, hey, at least uh, pretty much all those recipes were a piece of cake for her, so she had super right. speed. Uh, Starlight stops Pinkie from talking and t- levitates her to the foyer, where the animals are afraid of Fluttershy. And I will be afraid of Fluttershy, too. You see those creepy crawlies all over her? Ugh. The funny thing is, I don't think in her proper mindset, Fluttershy would mind. Yeah, true, but not to that level. But anywho, uh, we get a lot of no-nos here. She's got spiders and she's got ticks. She's got ticks all over her and, uh. No. Uh, does that leave you, does that leave you ticked off? Tish. No, 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 it just leaves me, uh, feeling all creepy and crawly, man. Like I got tingles down my spine. Oh no, wait, that's the centipede. <laughs> oh god, but anywho. Uh, Rarity goes find more fabric to make a uber giant dress, and well, there's smoke. Oh my god, what what's going on? Pinky tells Starlight that hey, um, I had cake in the oven and it's burning. <laughs> and Starlight asks for water to help put out the fire. And Rainbow Dash is on the case, and you know what Rainbow Dash do, right? Turn it up to eleven and floods the castle. Yay! One of the few things that I like about Applejack is her phrase, her phrases. And one of my favorite is, with a whole lot of power comes a heck of a lot of responsibility. And again, making that deal yeah, with the devil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no deals with, no deals with, uh, Tyrek yeah. in here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> one more damn it. Uh, but anywho. Though I do have to, though I do have to say, um, if you are gonna flood the entire castle like that, 
you gotta wonder what what the reupholstering costs are gonna be. I mean, seriously. Oh, as we see later on in this episode, Twilight does not give a fig about the state of her castle. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> can't really say I blame her. Yeah. And talking about Twilight, here she comes in, looking really angry, and oh my goodness. Starlight Glimmer, you're in trouble. Except not really in the next scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, well, twi- <laughs> Starlight here... Uh, well, after Twilight kind of fixes the brainwashing spell, uh, which took a lot out of her, she asked the most civil question. What were you thinking? Oh my god, why? What made you think that brainwashing is a good idea? Twilight is is now trying to take the moral high ground when she was perfectly willing to use a uh, want it, need it spell and a reformation spell. And she's like, yeah, you kind of lost the moral high ground here, Twilight. Are you ever going to say, I know how tempting it is to use magic as a shortcut? Yeah, yeah, she should have said that. But still, that that face, that, I mentioned this earlier and I will mention this again. Season 6 is full of memorable faces. The animators were working top-notch to have some mm-hmm, fun. Indeed. So, Starlight here says she's sorry and she doesn't really know what to do because all she wanted to do was impress Twilight with how well she could do her homework. And, well, she doesn't, she didn't want to let Twilight down. But, in the process of not letting her down, she did. And, well, Twilight's not really angry, but rather disappointed with the whole fact. And with this, Starlight decides to make amends of everything by making a formal apology to Twilight's friend and her own. And the next day, I hope this is the next day, if not, that will be one heck of a time leap, uh, she asks to meet the main five in some cafe. And is this the same cafe that they met up front in, what about Discord or another place? I think it's the same place. Might be the same place, but I gotta, I gotta love how all the main five just have massive hangovers yeah. from the whole yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why, but based on the uh, gallery that's been given, um, Fluttershy has an oddly cute look, like in the first picture. Fluttershy always has an oddly cute look. I know, but, but even with like a hangover, she seems oddly adorable, and I don't know why. Yeah, because Fluttershy is adorable. It's because she's already so demure. That uh, seeing her wither under a hangover. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And one of the quotes from Applejack is, I don't know what kind of whammy start I put on us, but I feel like I've got shoved through the super speedy side of Squeezy 6000. <laughs> uh, reference. Yay. Continuity. I that was Silver's bit. I'm referencing how I nearly lost my home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, All because of a stupid bet that I didn't even have to make. Man, my pride is really going to cost me to farm one day. Uh, But hey, we get all the ponies having a really bad day. Uh, And poor Rarity. Except Rarity. She still looks fabulous. True, but still, don't talk too loud. Oh, please, not too loud. And, well, Starlight comes in and apologizes. And clearly, one pony is not taking this, which is Pinkie Pie, because she's angry that... She had to waste food and pastry and cake. She had to waste all those good things. How dare you? Well, I'd be angry too. That's good food. And well. And plus environment <laughs> stuff. Yeah, but still, um, Starlight. I, I will unleash all of my Al Gore on you. Starlight here says she's really, really sorry and apologizes. And well, Applejack is the first pony to accept the apology and, well, help Starlight clean the mansion or the castle because, well, her excuse is that there's, there's a lot of pictures that she needs to gather back. And well, so the shy needs to find her animal friends and so on. Except Pinky. Until she says, yeah, she's over it. Well, even then she no. says she's over it, but she's not really over it until the the montage. Everybody needs a montage. montage. The montage. And said montage goes through them sewing back the um, banner. Applejack and Starlight have a one, one-to-one talk about pictures and history of the Apple family. And um, this is one thing that is creepy, which 
I think Spike agrees with me because they're putting cobwebs back up and putting the spiders there. That what? Twilight's the princess of friendship, so that's the friendship to all beings, including spiders. Because as we all know, spiders are amazing and will be amazingly true friends and make friends with pigs and then make you. Oh, Charlotte, why did you die? You were so young. Okay. I think that's more a web of deception. Oh, uh, uh. But this is what I mean that Twilight doesn't care about her castle. There have got to be whole floors going neglected to have this kind of disrepair and just lack of care. It's like, why? Well, again, do you... she's one pony. She's one pony and one dragon assistant. They got a gigantic castle. She doesn't have any staff. Where so, are her maids? Where which, are her guards? Which again, I ask, why did you, the, the castle, why did the Tree of Harmony give her this superfluous castle? It's like, uh, this is a gift bestowed by the greatest power. Is that a cobweb? <laughs> Seriously, I make you a new home and you let it go to cobwebs. Oh, well, it just needs to hire some assistants. That's okay. all she needs to do. All right, you know what? I'm I'm repurposing here. Look here. Here's the outhouse of friendship. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but anywho. Uh, no, no, no outhouse of friendship, please, no. But anywho, um, Pinky is, well, mixing some cake and batter. And, well, Starlight kind of helps in. And, well, both of them have a good time baking. And Starlight Glimmer doing the sweet, sweet dance. Yay. And, well, thinking that she has not learned her lesson... Twilight tells Starlight that she did. By doing the things that she did with her friends, she's learned a lesson. This is not hard, is it? Well, it is hard, because apparently whatever magic Mobius strip craziness she pulled off on the pool is just like an infant loop of infinity. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure a physics professor somewhere is crying <laughs> after looking at uh, that. But anywho, after everything's done downstairs, they head up to the roof... And have themselves a chillaxing time. Uh, and only Starlight here doesn't really get the whole, what is a chillaxing? What do we do? And everybody laughs. Not at her, but with her. And said, No, no, they were definitely laughing at don't her. Don't do me mean. Nerd who doesn't understand modern uh, slang. And episode ends. <laughs> <sighs> what do you guys think of this episode? And we'll start off with Silver. Well, I, this is a lot of fun all around. It's, it's, you get to see the pony, everything just fall apart under starlight. And we've made comparisons. And I see it as sort of a companion to winter, winter wrap up in that starlight has to learn she's more than just magical talents. Now, truth be told, it's sort of a two part phase because she doesn't get to affect that until, uh, to there and back again. So, but I do see the comparisons to lesson zero where an attempt to create a fix, quick fix with magic blows up even worse. And yet it is kind of sad that Twilight doesn't acknowledge I've I've had the same temptation and it never worked. Twilight's tried to be all authoritative and stuff, but we, the audience, we know. Yeah, I would. We know. I would enjoy if Twilight says, I've been there before, I understand how you feel, but magic is never the solution to this kind of things. If she just worded that, oh, I'll be happy. But nah, it's okay. We don't mind. Yeah. Starlight well, Glimmer. That's asking way too much from the writer's you, yeah, yeah. Twi your disappointment is Twilight's flavoring. She's like, mm, that's some good Norman tears. Mm. But this was an episode I think that made or break Starlight for a lot of fans. People were arguing about her beforehand. Now this was ammunition for people who didn't like Starlight, seeing her bra brainwash every member of the main cast except Twilight, and those who love Starlight. We're just delighted with the antics, I think. And what about you, Seppi? There really isn't much to, like, say that I haven't really said already. I enjoy, like, some references in the show from Applejack's part. I enjoy just the concept of, you know, this. I'm, I'm not one for, like, trying to explain my inner thoughts on the episode, because there isn't much to say for me. And Wills, what about you? I love the brainwashed main five. Just, it is such a delight to see what happens when you do 
the absolute bare minimum to give someone a simple order and see how much that one simple order can drag into the worst possible thing you could have imagined. It's it, it's a glorious train wreck in slow motion. The comedy in here is well-timed. The references are great to have as well. And just seeing how absolutely insane this whole thing falls apart. It, it's a it, it's a blast. And we get to see, you know, a lot of cool magic. We got to see a lot of characters uh, being weird. And, you know, Starlight learns her lesson in the end by realizing, hey, you know what? Well, maybe magic isn't the solution to everything, right? Magic may not be the solution. But alcohol is. Candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. <laughs> Entirely. But no, no, Starlight, as Silver said, uh, this was a good start onto showing how she can be more than what she thought she was. And as for me, this episode is what Starlight needed. She needed something of an attraction where, hey, she's a regular jokester, a derpster, where we want to laugh at her misfortunes because laughing at one's misfortune is funny because it's comedy go and with how she did this here it opens up a few things where it reveals to us that hey starlight is really good at magic if you haven't known that from the very beginning here is a reminder she's really good at the magic and also she's very awkward when it comes to friendship did i mention that she really is good at magic when it comes to the season finale we can throw that out the window but overall, this episode is pretty fun. I do like this episode. From the Hangover Ponies to the Applejack reference. And, well, all around comedic timing. I like it. So you're saying this is the episode that Starlight needed, but not the one she deserved. Uh, yes, she needed this, but she don't deserve this yet. Because that is safe till the end of the season. Yes, we will come to that one soon enough. Yeah, and that's when Starlight gets everything she deserves. Huzzah. But anywho, Silver, what's next week's episode going to be? Well, I believe we are going to skip on back to the comics as we talk in rhyme about Rainbow Dash's very bad mm -hmm. day. It's been a while. It's been a while. Rainbow Dash is no good, horrible, very bad mm -hmm. day. And funny enough, Someone met me at the Friendship Express and asked me, when are we going to do the comic reviews again? When are we going to do the comic review again? Because apparently someone really likes our comic review. So we are going to do the comic review soon enough. Um, I think it's after this one. So hey, you'll get your comic reviews. Yay. And Yay! we get to do stuff. But anywho, until next week, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been the incorruptible, mindless silver quill. I've been Sapphire Heart Song, I guess. I don't know. I'll be whatever you want me to be, Norman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. I, I think you said that wrong, Will. It's supposed to be mwah. Good night, everybody. Mwah, night everybody. Not that gay, but okay. <laughs>